Hey guys, I'm Vaughn. I make comics. I've been doing it since I was eight years old. And here we are again with cancel culture. It's in the air. It's everywhere. In fact, it's really dark outside in general lately. Everything, the crime, the chaos. It seems like the heat's getting turned up on society to the maximum. Inflation, war, people storming our border like a freaking invading army. Fun for the whole family. And then there's cancel every. Hey, ask Ed Piscor. Except he got canceled for doing something bad, for violating something. Adults should protect children. He violated that. People were swift to cancel him. The news knocked on his door. His art show was shut down. His work partner that did vid YouTube videos with him every day, his friend, just publicly disowned him. Horror show, man. Real horror show. But you know what? He he went out of bounds. He did something wrong. But there's another side to that cancel culture coin where people didn't do anything wrong. No one got hurt. No no one was violated. And in fact, people in comics are getting canceled anyway. And when I talk about people, not just nobody, just somebody making indie comics. No, I'm talking about people who have worked for Marvel and DC before. I'm talking about people like Shane Davis who's drawn Superman, talking about John Malin, who maybe drew a book you've heard of called Cable. You guys catching on? These are people who have done good things and have been at conventions and had great times with fans for years without incident. They're suddenly canceled from C2E2, Chicago. Oh, Chicago. <laughs> I knew you well. So um, this is the other side of cancel culture, the side that is ideologically looking for who's pure and who's impure and then making up some excuse about safety or some sort of random rule violation that could easily be fixed something to make sure that you don't get to hang out and sell your wares and and also put out that you have different stances and beliefs than a lot of these uh people do who are trying to ideologically invade what you love hey uh let me get a little personal with you guys real quick before i read this this is john malin's tweet about what just happened to him and about how he was canceled with uh, from his booth. Uh, he already had put money down, I believe, at C2. And he wasn't given a chance to talk to them or figure anything out. So, I lived in Chicago for 10 years. And I would say that place red-pilled me. Because it was so ideologically insane. And was only got more radical the longer I lived there. Over a 10-year period. And became... Like a place of like unhealthy, messed up women. And uh, when I left it, I felt like I was leaving a sick city that was only going to get sicker after I left. I was glad to leave and start over somewhere new in the South and get to where a little bit more sanity is. And um, I'm telling you, those cities, there's great people in them and they attract a lot of attractive, successful, smart, hardworking, professional people. But the city culture itself, I'm telling you, it was sick. It was Every woman I went on a date with was like <laughs> addled with mental illness. And and, and it, was, it was one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen in my life and I could I couldn't live there anymore and then slowly over time like I was starting to be called a racist for nothing by every you know it was like what people got more and more radical all around me women got more and more insane and more hateful of men openly um everyone was fucking in an open relationship everyone went poly I mean are those some good examples but the best example was for me the one that red pilled me was going to a video game symposium on a college campus and then discovering that it was just run by a bunch of activists saying that white men need to get the hell out, that for the freedom of speech uh, is a problem, and there's too much of it, and we need to start putting a little tighter regulations on speech. I was like, this is a takeover. When I saw that, I saw that this horrible culture within the city that I was subject to, where everybody's okay with corrupt Democrat rule, as long as they have their nice little neighborhood and place to eat, they don't care. They're taxed to death. There's crime everywhere. And yet, as long as they have their own little nook and the city works, the trains keep moving or whatever, they're like, okay, it's okay that you guys are corrupt. After living in Chicago and watching it get radicalized and watching it turn against white straight men just for being a, a guy <laughs> existing i was like you know i think i need to get the hell out of here man i need to get out of here it's getting a little too crazy now we're finding out that their convention c2e2 which is the big deal one that a lot of people look forward to going to and does really well a lot of fans go to it it's huge we're finding out that they're canceling people we should read what john had to say about it and uh yeah Let's see what he has to say. Cancel culture is alive and well at C2E2. Five weeks before the show, we have suddenly been removed as ex exhibitors due to allegations of making non-specific offensive comments. So someone alleged they said something naughty. God, let me tell you women something. Women, 
We gave you power and you use it to be the class tattletale about saying naughty things. Like, what the hell, women? I'm in a mood, man. This kind of upset me. I'm going to be honest. Like, to see the dark side of cancel culture rear its head again, and all it's doing is making me realize it might actually get worse from here, guys. If we don't stand up to this, if people don't speak out about this, it's going to get worse. Okay, let's get back to what John's saying. So ADD. <laughs> uh, we are artists, publishers, and YouTube entertainers that also talk politics with sometimes edgy humor. Can we be offensive? Absolutely. Are we criminals or harassers? No. Conservatives? Yes. Your peers? Yes. C2E2 also alleges that Shane Davis' booth was under his company name, was subletting his booth by having others sit in. We have never hidden our intentions from C2E2. We were told to list the booth under a single company by them. Had we known there was an issue for our 2020 premier exhibitor booth, we would have divided the 2020 into four 10 by 10 booths and asked for them to be combined. If there was an issue, why weren't we approached with a chance to find a solution after spending thousands of dollars? They wanted us out. I fully expect our industry to turn another blind eye to this incident and take no stand whatsoever against the monstrous behavior rot inside. <sighs> we would like C2E2 to reinstate our booth. C2E2 is a chance to be on the right side of history and in this shameful practice of cancel culture. So what we have here is they were told something, some, they wouldn't say what, but they supposedly said something offensive. I don't see how that make, makes it so you can't have a booth though. I don't understand what the problem is. Like, like Howard Stern says offensive things and you know, people pay millions of dollars. But you know, anyway, they could have talked to them if it was an issue and, they, and then they would have just worked with them to solve it. I don't think they would have been unprofessional about it. I think John and uh, Shane are both pretty pro guys who take this stuff seriously. And they've done, the part that's frightening is they've done so many cons already throughout the, over the years and there's been no incident. Everything's been great. We, we need more controversial artists also, I would argue, especially in this era of like mom approved corporate made Star Wars and weird movies that don't make any sense or have any heart and soul or edge to them or fun or danger. There's there's no like rebellious art anymore. <laughs> you know, you guys, when you kill that, you kind of kill the art. You kind of, you kind of put a dent in comics that might not recover from. But then again, there's always going to be another rebel out there. That's what I love. So there's going to be another one person out there like me, like John, like Shane, people who, who are going to create comics on their terms and not be stopped. And this type of stuff won't stop anyone. And the reason this is happening, my friends, is because C2E2. As Chicago becomes more radicalized, more rap people with radical ideas and, and attitudes and opinions are running things, okay? And when they're running those things, they're going to start doing radical, crazy things. That's why we have judges across America going, oh, we'll just take Trump off the ballot, which they can't actually do. And they had to get ruled against that by the Supreme Court. Things like that. Like, they're, they're that's power, guys, to be able to be like, he's just off the ballot. Like, that's crazy power, and they're obviously abusing it. Like, you don't think they're going to cancel someone at C2E2? Of course they will. They abuse their power like it's their bread and butter. They love that. <sighs> and at the same time, isn't this infuriating? Like, adults trying to run their businesses and reach their fans and comics, which is already like a slim margin type business. And then, like, someone tattles on you and pff, you're canceled, man. C2E2, I know you don't listen to me, but I'm telling you. As a comic artist, as a comic guy, you don't want to make draw lines like this. It's only going to get worse. It's only going to bring more attention to us, though. So I don't know. Maybe that's our silver lining. I just think this type of discrimination shouldn't happen. And that guy, my friends, is why Comicsgate happened. What is Comicsgate? It's something that I was a part of before it was even called Comicsgate. It was a bunch of fans and artists who stood up to what we saw as discrimination in comics cancellation in comics just based off ideology not based off a real reason not based off anyone being harmed or anything and it all started around 2016 when trump got elected i watched half our country go nuts and then say we're just going to discriminate against trump supporters we're going to give them a hard time openly you guys said this on twitter i saw it on facebook i was called a nazi by people who I, were my co-workers the next day after, after trump got elected crazy time to live man and then they started discriminating in comics as they promised they would they said it in tweets openly i've never seen anything like it i've never seen america do that like oh well he he won the presidency well then we hate half america and we're going to discriminate against you this is radical that is radical immature marxist maniac culture um and here they are tattling getting people canceled from cons now it's it's everywhere everything's going on in comics is happening in the greater world around us and higher levels of power and politics it's crazy and uh, i wish it wasn't i think c2e2 should like really consider not crossing this line it would it does more damage than it does help it doesn't protect anyone it's more of a little nanny nanny boo boo for you moment for you guys i'm thinking but hopefully i'm wrong hopefully you guys will be cool 
try to fix this. If not, you know what we're going to do? We're going to just fund our own fest. Comicsgate uh, stood up to uh, more things than just discrimination, guys. Comicsgate stood up to uh, fans being treated horribly by pros. I mean, I watched pros be just awful to them all the time. We, we stopped respecting the customer, which is wrong. And we and we couldn't we couldn't stand people just discriminating against us and calling us Nazis anymore. Like if someone had to take a stand, and Comicsgate did it first before anyone else. We killed it, man. We did what we were supposed to do. We we were the first line, just like Gamergate were the first ones ever to stand up and say, "Nah, I don't think I don't think so. We don't need this ideological shit running our like corrupting our stuff. We don't need it. It's ruining fandom. It divides it. It ruins everything." So you know, thank God for the gamers for standing up first, and then thank God for Gamergate for the first ones in comics to stand up to this discrimination. Uh, apparently. It's 2024. There's an election coming up. Everyone's getting all hot and bothered and nasty and more vicious. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. I'm Vaughn. I make comics. I'm kind of over what they've uh, what they've turned comics into. But at the same time, I got to admit, guys, this is a long road ahead. And they're going to make it worse before it gets better. I think we might start seeing a whole lot of cancellations. We might. I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. But I'm feeling it, right? I'm thinking as we get closer to the election, and even after the election, they'll do what they did last time, right? We're going to discriminate against you if you voted for Trump. Deja vu. And all over again. Crazy, crazy. Don't support cancel culture. Support the artists that stand up to it. Artists like John Malin. Artists like Shane Davis. Uh, and artists like me. I've got books on Indiegogo now. You can check out some links in the description. Guitar Witch Hunter is at the printers right now. I paid for, paid for it all used, using your awesome, generous funds. And we're going to start shipping in as soon as I get the books in. Appreciate you guys. I hate seeing cancel culture like this happen to people who are great artists and great fans. I care about people that uh, I think have been kept at Cutter Comic. Full of uh, bullshit. Find the real ones, guys. I appreciate you tuning in. And uh, I'll see you on the Bonds haunted the castle. Ha 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 ha.